Okay then, I am, hello there, Nancy. This is like the first Scorpion video, do you remember? Do you remember the first Scorpion video I did for you before your birthday? That was on YouTube. This is kind of like that. We're testing the new technology, yes. Okay, so whoops. Um, I want to show you first my stratifying seeds. I'm growing some um, Japanese wisteria, so I am preparing the seeds, just like I'm preparing the seeds of some exciting things for yoga bloom, teacher training, therapeutics. Um, call me sometime and soon and we'll chat about it. I will be, um, yes, that is my PJs. I'm not in my PJs, but you know, kind of looks like PJs. Huh? Um, but there's going to be some exciting Yoga Bloom training opportunities online that I am very excited about. So uh, I will be announcing those soon. So, you know, chat me. Okay, so hips. Chair. Can you see the chair? Okie dokie. Iyengar chair. This one does require Iyengar chair. Um, also, you can have some blocks. I have some nice blocks by um, our favorite gang, Hunger Mugger. I have some exciting blocks from them. Some of their first blocks ever made. They're kind of cute, cool. Um, I'm gonna get some more blocks just because I want to show you something else for the hip. But I want to show you something very cool. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, these aren't even the Hugger Mugger ones, are they? But they have like a stamp, a rubber stamp on them. It's pretty cool. They were um, they were hand stamped and handmade then. So okay, we got a chair. I am going to show you a preparation for a karna don nirasana. Um, do you know that pose a karna don nirasana? Well, I'll show you after we get this prep. So chair block. I'm going to turn the chair this way. You are going to put your foot on the chair. And do you see how the foot is, and I don't want the knee past? No, 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 no. <laughs> and back. No, 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 no. Okay. I want this knee directly above this foot. Directly above. See that? Okay. Now, you're going to inhale, and as you exhale, come down. You trying it? Okay. If you have the opening, don't push. If you have the opening, now notice, you might want to tuck to do that. Don't tuck, bad for your sacrum. Just really get that hip joint open. See how the hip joint is open? Now, if you have the opportunity, you can walk down. You see how that feels? Babs, have you joined us? So, again, we'll do the other side. So I'm going to switch the chair. Right? Then you're going to place your foot. Again, not bad. Bad, right? Directly over this over this, the foot. See, foot, knee, in line. Okay? The bottom foot, try to keep it also in line so that you're not like balleting hip, but just really coming down the middle. Then come down. Okay, feel that hip? Feel the opening? Now walk on down. If it's easy for you, you can walk down and hold the bottom of the chair. I don't know if you can see. So I can sort of hold on to the bottom of the chair. See? Can you see? Okay. Now. Let's just try the other side again. The 
block. Bend down. And then come on up. You do this slower, but I just kind of, for the sake of the video. Yes, Astavakrasana, it would be good for. Because again, it's the rotation. Now, however, there's one other thing with Astavakrasana. What is different about Astavakrasana? Think about it. What's different? Okay. It'll be a little bit, it'd be very good, but it's not enough. Okay. So, here. Now, block. Raise the foot. See this? Now, bending down. Do you see how this shape is very much like I can just duck under? Do you see that? I could just duck under my leg, right? Keeping my foot in line. Is this helpful to you guys? Okay. So, I'm gonna assume it is because I know there's a delay and, you know, might as well show you this while I get my stretch on. <laughs> so we're gonna first start with the foot down, okay? Again, you see in alignment, and then come on down. So this is my less open side. I can feel it. Can you feel it? I mean, not my side. Can you feel your side? Whichever that is. I don't know which one that is. Okay, now bring the foot onto the bottom. Now again, I'm not gonna let this go forward. Do you see that? I'm keeping it aligned and I'm coming down. Whoa, feel that. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okie dokie, are you feeling that? Yes. Okay, cool. Now, this is gonna get into the hip joints a little bit differently. We're gonna come on down, okay. And you are going to have the blocks nearby. I don't know, can you see the blocks? Okay. Remember, these are my gang. Hugger mugger, we love hugger mugger. <laughs> Okay, first, you're going to take the chair, you're going to sit, take your feet wide, sit, okay, inhale, lift up, now don't poke out, see that, lift up, and exhale, come forward, okay, come forward, now walk forward, Walk forward. Lengthen the back. Can you feel it? You have to lengthen the back a little bit. So don't let this tuck, okay? Bad for sacrum. Like get the whole pelvis with you, get the glutes happening with you, and come on now, okay? Feel the hip opening? Okay, now. Bring the block, feel the, see the block, take the block, take the block, place your foot on the block. Same action, lift up and exhale and fold down. Watch the feet. Do you see you don't want to do ballet feet, right? You've got the block. 
you've got the block there to tell you what's happening in the joint. See where the hip, the femur bone is? The foot is where the femur is, yeah? Foot, femur. Come on down. If you wanted to, you could hold on to the back rung of the chair. I don't know if you can see that. And those. So, can you see how those are good stretches? Now, again, you could do it with the higher blocks. It would be the same thing. I'm not going to go through it. You could do the same stretch right, with higher blocks. That's why I had two of them. So, you could take the two higher, inhale, lengthen up, and exhale, fold down, right? Come down. So, you know, same idea, right? This is to get into the pose. Uh, the blocks are not changing. The foot is the direction of the head of your femur. Where your foot goes is where the femur goes. So if you take the block out, then you're going out with the femur. You don't want to break the femur, but the thing is that you want to not overdo and hurt the groin. Because if you overdo here, right, rather than getting the glute to really wrap around and work for you, it's not going to help you in the pose, right? So it's like, is it preya or is it shreya? Is it pleasure or is it that which has a good outcome? Right? Um, which is my third module, by the way. The thought of my third module. Viveka is the second. So, the reason I'm trying to get into this, uh, or this opening, in case you don't know, for the pose, is Akarna Dhanurasana. I don't know how you can see me. Akarna Dhanurasana is that you go from Dandasana, right? Not. Dandasana, right? But Dandasana, if you need to sit on, um, let's just say, I'm going to sit on a little half ball, just because it's what I have right here. So, a little half ball, because that helps me get this action out and this action in right now. So, I'm going to sit up, right? Lift up. And a Karna Dhanurasana, the pose, full pose, is that let's say if it's the right foot, I would take it here. And I would hold the other toe, and I would bring it toward my foot, my head, my ear. Okay, it's um, bow and arrow pose. So it requires a lot of devotion and a lot of motion, right? Devotion and motion. So it's like shoot like an arrow, right? You're drawing, you're drawing this foot back, and then you have to lift up, right? So there's more to, to the pose, but I just wanted to show you um, where we were going to. Let me see how it is without the block. It was sliding a bit. So, yeah, okay. I think it'll be better. Yeah, shoot like an arrow. See that? So it's like you have to shoot like an arrow. Um, and the pose needs you to lift up, right? So you go from here and lift up. So that's really helpful, those preps to move into, especially Astavakrasana, right, where you bring the foot and you're going to lift up in the arm balance. Or in Ekapada, anything, right, either Bakasana in front or Bakasana in the back or Galavasana, um, Kunyanasana, any of those. They require a lot of hip opening. So, especially the ekapada, anything, you know, one leg, anything, doing two different things, right? So, hopefully that was helpful for a little hip stretch. Um, we could do more of these. I'm going to get my new website up, and I'll be doing classes and that kind of thing. And uh, let's see, see how it goes. Give me some feedback. See y'all soon. Happy yoga-ing, bend and bloom. Bye.